Hi, it's Robin. Welcome to all the new subscribers from the last video. I was not expecting that. Continuing on with the Easter egg theme, I was reading some newsletters in a 2015 TPUG, that's the Toronto Pet Users Group, pet as in this one here. In that newsletter, the Great Commodore Microsoft Easter Egg War, and it's by Tristan Miller from nothingisreal.com. And in this article, he talks about a number of Easter eggs, including the famous one from the Commodore 128. I've shown that in a previous episode. Here's a quick clip from that. Probably everybody who knows about the C128 knows about this Easter egg. Just issue this sys command, and it displays the people who made the Commodore 128, the software and the hardware, or herdware, as it's mentioned here, along with their peace message about linking arms, don't make them. What a bunch of hippies. And there's a similar Easter egg in this Commodore 16. Just type sys52651, and it prints the names of some of the developers. And look, Commodore 16 even has a blink attribute. Maybe that's where HTML got it from. Now, Microsoft themselves would hide Easter eggs in computers with their basic, such as this Radio Shack TRS-80 color computer. To trigger the Easter egg, just do a screen clear command, CLS, with an invalid color number, like 9, and there it prints Microsoft on the screen. Thanks to the Foster family for giving me this color computer. It was owned by their dad, Leslie Foster, who is the index editor for Rainbow Magazine. That was the major color computer magazine back in the 80s. According to a little author byline, he bought this computer in April of 1981. The most notorious Commodore Easter egg of all was created not by Commodore employees, but by Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft and author of Commodore's Basic Interpreter. At least, partially the author of it. Gates' hidden message is triggered by typing wait 6502, 1 on certain Commodore pets. It's only early Commodore pets that are running Basic 2. Now, I've got my pet 2001 here. This is one of the very earliest pets produced. Unfortunately, this pet is in need of repair. So, through the power of emulation, we'll just pretend it's working. And there you can see that wait command prints out the word Microsoft, however many times you typed after the comma, 64 times in this case. Now, that Easter egg was hidden so that Commodore was unaware that that code was in there when they first released the pet, or when they released the pet with BASIC 2 in it. The legend is Commodore management was furious when they found out that Bill Gates had wasted a bunch of bytes in the very limited memory that was in these ROMs on that Easter egg. So they removed it in the next revision of BASIC. And BASIC 2, that was reused in the Commodore VIC-20 and Commodore 64, also had that Easter egg removed. So it was only in the basic two on those earlier pets. Now, Tristan Miller here reports that Commodore exacted revenge on Gates with their own Easter egg. And I had never heard of this before. So I was curious and a bit suspicious. The method Gates used to obfuscate his Microsoft message is rather pedestrian. The string is actually stored in ROM beginning at the address E082 but with the letters reversed and the unused upper bits randomized. By comparison, Commodore's own Easter egg is a true marvel of software engineering. Its message is actually embedded inside BASIC's random number generator. So we're going to give this reported new Easter egg a try. Okay, so I've got the 64C set up now, and we're going to type in this program that will reveal this Easter egg. Okay, I made a couple slight modifications to it just for to improve the formatting of it. Now let's try running it to see this secret message. Well, how about that? As Tristan Miller said, it's a rather gratuitous insult directed at Gates himself. 
But I did some more hunting and I found that there's other messages in here. Apparently not everyone at Commodore agreed with this sentiment. So I found a similar message. If I just change this number here to 1635831. And then I run it has a very different message. Well, a similar message with a very different meaning. Actually, there's even more Easter eggs in here. Let's make one more modification here. If I change this one to 356142, and if I change this one to just a short number, 762, and if I change this number to 222, Four four zero, and I run that. Not an egg. Okay, that's my subtle way of saying this is not actually an Easter egg. Almost had me fooled for a minute. So this is an elaborate hoax from Tristan Miller, and it's quite clever. So I'll show you how I found this text, not an egg. Just load up this search program I wrote. So this little program searches the random number space for particular strings for words when those numbers those random numbers are interpreted as strings so i'll just show you how it works here in b string we're just setting it to the string that we want to search for now this can take a really long time for a one megahertz computer in basic so i'm just going to demonstrate with this very short word Longer words that are three, four, five letters get exponentially longer to find. T is just a short variable for 22. This is just an optimization. Rather than multiplying by 22 down here, as Tristan did in his original program, I'm just trying to squeeze a bit of speed out of it, as I've shown in a previous video. Using variables is quicker than constants. And S for 64, and that's used in the addition down here. I'll explain that in a bit. So here's a loop for B, and I've removed the spaces as another optimization, but just for legibility. B is just going to be counting up. It's the seed for any particular word. For every seed, we will get back a random, well, a, a predictable but seemingly random string of letters. So we're just iterating through while we search for the word we want. Not all words are going to appear in the sequence, but I had pretty good luck with most up to four, sometimes five letter words. We're going to seed the random number generator with a negative number. Whatever the seed is, we're going to put it in as a negative, and we're initializing a blank string, and this is the main job here. I'm using a percent, an integer variable, as that's actually slightly faster as I explained in a previous video, integer variables are pretty useless in Commodore Basic, but it is slightly faster in some cases than using the int function. So that's why I'm using it here. We're getting the random number from the sequence, and which is from between 0 and 1, and multiplying it by that t, which is 22, to produce a random number from 0 to 21. And that number from 0 to 21 is the letter. If it's a zero, that's our null termination for the string, the end of the string. But otherwise, we get a number from 1 through 21, which are the first 21 letters of the alphabet, which brings us up from A through U. And that's necessary in the Bill Gates example. The last letter in the alphabet we're using is U. If A% percent is checking for the null end of the string, if it's not zero, not null, then we're just going to add that character letter plus 64, which is the Petsky code, is at 65. So if we had the number one, this changes into letter A through U. And it's just depending it onto the string. A string equals A string plus. And then we're checking to make sure that the string that we are building isn't longer than the string that we're searching for. And it just loops through 110. This quickly builds the string, well, as quick as basic can be. If the string that we've built is equal to the string we're looking for, then it prints out the seed number 
and the string. Actually, we could end right there if we wanted to as well. And then it just iterates through. So I'll just show it searching for N. I'm going to fast forward this because this is going to take a while even for a two letter word. Oh, I forgot to set my timer. There we go. Okay, so a seed of 762 produces the word an. And egg is a much bigger seed. We had to count a lot further than that, not as well. And this is fairly impractical. If you ever have the need to run a basic program, a Commodore basic program, very quickly, of course, you can use an emulator and put it in warp mode. But if you need to go even faster than that, then as my friend Maker Valp pointed out to me, there is a CBM basic scripting language that runs on Windows, Unix, Mac, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's by the fellow who runs Page Table. Is just is not an emulator. It is just a scripting language based around Commodore Basic, but it doesn't do pokes or anything. Uh, it's really quite neat, actually, for for very particular uses. I think I just need to explain a little bit more about how the random number generator works. If we just write a little one-line program here, if you put a negative parameter into random, that actually seeds the random number generator. And then from then on, if we go for x equals 1 to 10, print random 1, we'll print out 10 random numbers, all floats between 0 and 1. But if I press return on this again, you'll see nothing changes. All those numbers, that same random sequence happens each time. If I change to negative two, see how it's a different sequence, but then it repeats. Now, if I change this to any positive, well, any number above zero, random two, see it also doesn't change. As long as random receives a positive, well, a non-zero positive number, it will generate the same sequence every time. And if it receives a negative value, then it will produce a different sequence. That's what's happening in this little word search program here. We're giving it a negative value to seed the random number generator, and then we're interpreting these random numbers through some multiplication and addition as ASCII or Petsky characters. If you put a random zero in here, it disregards the seed it was given and always produces somewhat random numbers. You see? It's a different sequence every time, but apparently those aren't very good random numbers based on what I've read. I can see here, I don't know why, but it really seems to clump around certain values in a row. Uh, that's not so bad. Okay, so that's a explanation of kind of how that random number generator in Commodore Basic works and how Tristan Miller used it for this little hoax program. I've got the egg reveal program here again. I've got one more little example. I change this to 148194359105819249 and finally 12573299 and run that. There. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's pretty desperate of me, isn't it? And it got a little bit mangled here. It seems that the full word subscribe is simply not to be found in, in this random number generator, at least not with this kind of brute force strategy. Uh, I was unable to find it. So it took... Uh, took hours even for my multi-core modern computer to find <laughs> to find it as two different words. So thank you to my patrons for their support. If you're interested in supporting this channel, then please check out the link below. There's some special benefits for those who, who do support my channel. And thank you for watching. We'll talk to you next time.